everybody. In this episode, we are going to learn a bit about the Siddhi project and how it can be used to create stateful event-driven applications on top of Kubernetes. To do this, we have with us today Suho, who is the principal developer and team lead of the Siddhi project. Suho, can you tell us a bit about the Siddhi project? Yes. Siddhi is a cloud-native stream processor. Uh, it is not just a stream processor, but it also can help you to build any event-driven application. Uh, it has connectors to various event sources. It can consume events from them, process those stuff uh, in a real-time manner, and produce uh, notifications and alerts. It can also identify stateful patterns so that they can be used for fraud detection kind of use cases. Specifically, uh, CD is used for streaming analytics, uh, event-driven data integration, fraud detection, and surveillance. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I guess Kubernetes comes into the picture when we have scaling requirements, is it? Yes, so when you have Kubernetes in the environment, what basically uh, Siddhi does is it takes the application that you have written, you might just write a single application, it understands the state stateful and the stateless part of it, it distributes the application across the Kubernetes cluster. So users doesn't need to write small applications and connect them. They can just write one where Siddhi takes care of scaling that. So does Kubernetes help with stateful processing? Yes and no. Kubernetes have this concept of a stateful set, which apparently Siddhi doesn't use that. But with Kubernetes, what we basically do is first Siddhi identifies the stateful application and the stateless application. So for the stateless, ap stateless application, it basically uh, scale them using the Kubernetes replication factors. So in that case, it takes the help of Kubernetes. But in terms of the stateful application, the trick is we can't always store the state because for every event that is coming into the system, if we start storing them, it will be a huge performance overhead. So in that case, what it does, it's, it's do an interesting thing where it performs periodic snapshots. So let's, I'll, I'll explain how this periodic snapshot works. Let's say like for every five minutes, we are doing a snapshot uh, and the last snapshot happened at 9.10. So at this particular time, we have snapshotted the whole system in the memory so we can restart it from that time onwards. So let's say we have snapshotted at 9.10 and the system has gone down at 9.12. Right? So now there is a two minutes gap and when we restart the system at 9.10, now the data is not there from 9.10 to 9.12. Okay, let's Im imagine that the system restarted at 9.14, right? So the system will reload the data from 9.10, right? And then it will try to fetch the messages from 9.10 again, right? So for example, if you are using message brokering system like Kafka or NAT streaming, we can reload the data from a previous time, right? So, so with the help of Kafka and NATs, Siddhi reloads the data from 9.10 onwards and continue processing. So with this particular approach, it can preserve its state and also achieve high performance. So with this particular technique, uh, Siddhi was able to perform very fast and at the same time give you high availability and scalability okay. on Kubernetes. Thanks. And so can we see some actual queries in uh, action? Yeah, sure. I'll go into the demo now. Uh, so I'll start the Siddhi editor uh, to, uh, to show you a simple application, how you can export that and then run it in a distributed way in Kubernetes. Right, so you can see the application is starting here. Okay, I have pre-written an application here. So what we are basically going to do is we have something called a production stream, right? So that is going to consume the events. So we are going to consume the events through an HTTP transport uh, through a JSON message format. Right, so that message format, I have a simple stateless query where I check if the factory ID is 102 or 103. Uh, in those cases, I basically filter out them and pass them to something called a premium production stream. From the premium production stream, I'm going to take five minutes of that data and calculate the sum grouping the products by their name. Right, so when we do that, 
the grouped aggregations will be published outside so this is a straightforward query because we are remembering five minutes data uh, within uh, the application but i don't want to bombard a lot of data to the endpoint so what i'm basically doing here is i'm going to have a two second uh, rate limiting so every two second you get a message pushed to the endpoint right so uh, uh, and I'm, I ha I'm going to run the endpoint, which is also another HTTP server in this particular case. Uh, it is going to be a log server. It just consumes the log messages and, and simply logs them. So in order to, for this to run, I have to, uh, uh, I have parameterized this log service host, right? So you can basically see the log service host is going to be, uh, 10.100.14, uh, 1.44, which is basically my IP because I'm going to uh, run it here. Uh, and in this view, you can also see the graphical view and we can also drag and drop and build this through a graphical editor, which I'm not going to go into detail as well. Right, so let's first export this application to run it in Kubernetes, All right? So I'm going to go to export. And for Kubernetes, I'm going to say production analysis, right? And this is my CD uh, application. If I want to do some last, last minute edit, I can do that. Uh, and I don't want to change any configurations here. Everything is fine. This is the logger service host I have given here. I can, since I have parameterized, there is an option to change. And uh, I can build my own Docker image. Uh, to run it on Kubernetes if I have any specific bundles, jars or any extensions I have added here. Since everything comes by default in this pack, I'm not going to go to that option, but rather I'm going to use a default pack that is available, right? So in this case, I'm going to use uh, an RC2 pack uh, since it's a pre-release. Uh, I'm showing the pre-release as it gives you the latest of what we have at this point. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a distributed deployment with nets. We also have a distributed deployment with external nets. In that case, the user has to start the nets deployment first uh, by themselves. But in this particular case, the CD itself will start that for you. Right? So it has some advantage on that. And for persistence, for periodic persistence, I can use database, I can use file system, I can use Amazon S3. In this case, I'm just going to use the file system and the default configurations are given here. And I'm just going to export that. Um, so you can basically see, uh, I'm going to export it as 0001, right, just for this case. I'll show that in the, this one. I have a previous one. I'll just move that to bin. Uh, so when I unzipped it, you can see the CD files. Uh, it has a CD files, all the configuration, the Docker files related to it, and it also has um, uh, the CD process YAML which basically contains my application, the configurations, the image, what I have, what I basically filled through this uh, form, everything is there in this thing. So what I just need to do is just, I just need to apply this into Kubernetes and you will be able to see a distributed deployment happening. Right, so let's go into the console and I'll try to show you the parts that is running uh, in my machine. So, so you can see uh, I have the Nets operator, Nets streaming operator, and the CD operator installed. Uh, and you can also see the Nets uh, uh, and the um, Nets streaming servers are also running at this particular point, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to uh, watch CD. Currently, there is no CD resources deployed in Kubernetes. So you can natively see in Kubernetes, okay, what are the CD resources running there? So I'm going to now apply uh, the file that I have downloaded, which is the production analysis uh, CD process YAML, right? Oops. Cube CTL, right? So it is, you can see, 
it is basically creating a parser to identify the particular applications splitting them and then it will uh, create two more applications for that to run so you can also see now the application is in pending state because it is currently being starting uh, so let's wait for a while so for the system to get loaded at the meantime uh, i'll try to show you how this will be represented so currently um, you, as i as i explained you earlier it can basically um, it is going to basically split this application into two deployments one is for a stateless cd application and another one for a stateful cd application with a persistent volume click right so these are the things that's going to happen here so you can see there is two applications running the first one is a stateless application the second one is a stateful application i have also added a persistent volume claim just in case uh, persistence volume uh, for this to run i'll just show you that as well um, Yes, I have given a persistent volume which is being used by this CD application uh, that is running now. Okay, let's um, um, let me start uh, the log service to log the messages that we uh, they are going to send the final log messages. So, oops, Java minus Java. I have a very simple application here which is the log service so that is going to start on port 8080 and it's just going to log the messages that i'm going to send and i now i have to publish the messages okay so uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, add the uh, message here which is a curl command and you can see when i publish the message the messages are now coming into the system right so you can see <coughs> uh, with my messages, they are, uh, you, uh, the, the messages on the system is continuously increasing, right? So the aggregated amount, you can see it is continuously increasing and uh, the, it is increasing because um, um, I'm continuously sending those data to this. So if I want to kill a particular pod, I can do that here as well, right? So what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to kill this pod, right? So. So I'm, I'm terminating a particular pod here and I'm still continuing to uh, publish the data. But it doesn't matter for some, for some period of time, uh, you will not be able to see these messages because the system is restarting. As soon as it's available, the data will be continuously processing, right? So, and you can basically see the messages are, the counts are going up uh, and as as expected because we are having a five minutes window within that window if some messages have expired at that time the count goes down if it is a new data has been added the count goes up so as you can see uh, the messages are just flowing through uh, and the system is back on steady state and it's working fine right so this is a very simple scenario that i'm trying to explain you uh, how you can see the status of see the application which is in ready state and all two ap sub applications are in ready and you can see these two are running in the pods and then we are also publishing some messages and we are consuming from the other side right so that's all from me thanks so so what are the future plans for the Siddhi project yeah so as of now we have uh, divided a single application into two subparts one will be going to be the stateless one and another one going to be the stateful one but currently we are working on improving that to even more subparts like for example even the state one, stateful ones we can even divide them in a in much more performant optimized way so we are basically working on that uh, as of now so that's our next major release okay thanks so there you have it so that's a bit about the Siddhi project. So if you want to learn more, head over to the description and click the links. Thank you, Suho.